Hello there, and welcome back to my Southeast Texas Zone 9A garden. Just trying to give you a little pan of the entire backyard before uh, we get started. The grass was recently cut, so everything's looking uh, kind of crisp. And uh, you can see the dog's trail there. And uh, you can really see how everything's just kind of jumping up out of the ground. Never mind my water hose there. The ladder box is filling out pretty good. And that's where the uh, hummingbird, I did see a hummingbird. I do have a resident hummingbird now. And the bluebird is still there. There are chicks inside of there. I can hear them whenever the mom brings little insects to them. Everything is just kind of sending up buds and shoots and stuff and uh, there's a lot of anticipation this time of year. I have plenty of buds. The maple tree is um, budding out, leafing out. Very excited. Here we go. The wheat right here is uh, still coming along pretty good. There's a couple of awns on it now. They, Whenever you shake them they kind of rattle. Pretty cool little plant. Over here, I have the crinum lilies, and um, there's a few things in here. Right here, um, under here, there is liriope and a lead plant. This tiny little plant is a lead plant, really cool native, has purple spiked flowers. Let me get this out of the way so I can really show you the little, tiny little leaves. This is a second year plant, and then right over here are some seedlings that I planted a few weeks ago. Uh, the grassy stuff is Leatris. Uh, I can't remember if it's the Mucranata or the Spicata or Pic... Uh, I can't remember. But right here is the uh, uh, blue-eyed grass. This is a native in the iris family. The Leatris is also native. I have a few varieties. That's why I don't remember which one is which because I planted so many in so many different places. And here on the other side of the porch is a, a, a dianthus that is in full bloom still. And under here, my milkweeds are finally coming up. I have um, common milkweed and swamp milkweed. And here is a little crimson clover that, um, if I could focus, you can see that little bud on it. And I have some that are uh, actually in bloom. I'll show you a little bit later. The Rubecchia, Black-Eyed Susan, just doing fantastic. I love these yellow um, flowers, and so do the tiny bees. Bumblebees, not so much. It's mid-morning, so I'm kind of finding my shadow. And down here, I have a bat-faced kufia. Whenever it blooms, it looks like little bats' faces. It's very cool. And uh, behind it, over here, I have self-heal plant, um, Prunella vulgaria or something like that. It's a it's an herb and uh, it, it does have medicinal properties. This is the little bloom, the bud, and uh, the blooms will come out of that. Um, I, I guess you call that a bract, I don't know, but uh, it has purple flowers. And over uh, here is the Morisu Trillo Rose. It has very many buds on it. I'm very excited. You can see all the buds are kind of starting to open up. And behind here you can see a bloom. Let me get in there so that you can really see it. There you go. So bright and cheerful and it smells very good. Uh, this is uh, this is one of the roses that they call like a tea rose. So it's got like a light fragrance. It's not really super strong, but it definitely is there. And it just looks cool. So cool with the variegated petals. Over here, uh, this is the bed that is, uh, it has a border of daylilies. And I don't know what color they are yet, but one of them is bloom. It does have a bloom. Uh, this is going to be the first actual daylily that's not a ditch lily that blooms for me. Uh, since I planted the seed um, last year. So it went through a full season, didn't bloom, and then this is its second season. This is my hydrangea. And it's already got three buds and they're pretty close to opening. 
Uh, but you can see it's kind of already getting discolored because of the sun. You see where the leaf uh, it covered it up? It's darker because the sun has bleached the, the leaves already. It gets really intense here in Texas, guys. The, the hydrangeas do not like the sun. And over here, uh, uh, this large climbing rose, I still don't really know uh, what it is, uh, but it is definitely a climber uh, or a rambler, I guess. You can see the little buds on it. I have a cutworm somewhere that um, I is eating some of the buds, but uh, not to worry. They're not going to get all of them. And you can definitely see that this is going to be a red rose. Um, so many buds. I'm very excited. I will definitely show off some photos of that whenever they open. It's got that pretty red new growth. All right, over here where the dogs love to talk to each other. I also keep a like a few cuttings over here because the ground just kind of always stays moist. And uh, there's a there's a spoon tomato growing here, or maybe it's an Ozark pink. Either way, um, they that's a tomato there. And here are Kalanchoes. The purple is trade scanthia. And uh, I really just have this here so that the dogs are blocked. Here's some cannas. They're yellow and they're supposed to be dwarf variety, but they are all very vigorous growers. I don't know if I'm going to keep them here this entire year. And under there is a, uh, it's an ice cream banana. A few different things there. Uh, here's my oak leaf hydrangea, uh, cool native. And over here are some succulents. I don't really... I, I'm pretty sure that they're also some sort of calanchoe, calanchoe, calancho, um, but this, it, um, I haven't seen them turn red, so maybe they're liking life now. <laughs> um, that's the sugar berry. Over here, I have uh, some broccoli, and this is a swamp milkweed that is coming back from last year that I had planted the seed. Uh, there's a hibiscus there that I haven't seen come back. I don't know what's up with that. Behind the ladder box is some Turk's cap, and here is a mum, and this is a purple cabbage. You can see crimson clover everywhere. What I think is a foxglove right here. It hasn't put up a bloom spike yet. And I'm um, pretty sure that this is yarrow, or yarrow, an, another cool herb that does flower. Over here, I have some collard greens, or maybe it's broccoli, and some... Uh, Reuben red basil that's what the variety is I have Reese poppies this is another mum uh, here's my button bush it is coming back and a uh, there's a sunflower over there from the bird feeder this is the blue mist flower and the Greg's mist flower coming back from last year a mum a cutting of a rose that my neighbor's mom gave me last year I didn't think that was going to make it but it, it is so yay is a Colorado Columbine that is um, continues to bloom. Over here is some um, irises and uh, some flocks. You can see these wild flocks, wild blue flocks, but they're not really blue; they're purple. And over here you can see more calanchoe and irises and uh, some hostas there that have uh, come back from last year, also from my neighbor's mom appreciate those very much and those are a variegated kind and this little fence here is because this variegated liriope doesn't grow as vigorously as it's uh, not variegated neighbors uh so the dogs like to go in there through the, through there so i'd really like it to grow and block that off and i could remove that fence here's a uh, a large hosta Coming back from last year also, and a Texas spider lily. And this plant is a Gulf Coast penstemon. I picked that up at a local native plant sale. And behind, well, not really behind it. I guess it's beside it. This is a cardinal flower. This one should bloom in the late summer or fall here. It's got large, I mean long, uh, bloom spikes that are red. And back there are some seedlings of four o'clocks that are coming up. And uh, let me just show you these blooms on this penstemon. I gotta step into the garden a little bit. But uh, there's uh, insects, like, they love this. They're swarming around me right now as I'm filming this. Uh, you can see, let me see if I can get that. 
Um, some people call these beard tongues, but it's not the, uh, it's not foxglove beard tongue. It's Gulf Coast, it's from the Gulf Coast, and um, it's Pinstamen tenuis. I don't know what this is. If anybody knows what this is, please let me know. If it's a weed, I'll pull it out, but if it's not, then I'd like to keep it, but I would love to know. <laughs> Over here, my crepe myrtle is showing off with it being backlit from the sun. It looks super awesome. I'm pretty excited for its lavender blooms to come out this this uh, soon. Under it is some poppies. And here I have a couple of little bunches of wheat. I have a solidago fireworks under there. Right here is a daikon radish. And this is a Miranda Lambert rose. It has large hot pink blooms, and uh, there's the buds. So behind me, behind the, there, is the kid bed, and you can see some flocks blooming. This is just regular old garden flocks, and um, I actually forgot that I had planted it there. And it, there's some more coming up right here. I don't, I don't know if it'll be the same color, but the other foliage around here. This is Monarda fistulosa another native and there's some coreopsis and under here we have little buds coming up of a baptisia i think this is the uh false indigo the the large blue one and uh there's uh black eyed susans there also daylilies irises all kinds of things i am going to walk around to the other side and there is a daikon radish there with some uh collard greens and some seedlings of Leatrice, and you can see some irises and some zinnias and um that and my passion flower has a little sprout coming up right there and it looks like it's coming back from last year but that's all i see of it i don't see any growth on the middle of it uh, which is weird because it was a very vigorous grower last year and i am about 99 percent sure that it is definitely not dead <laughs> Uh, right here is a, a, milk, a butterfly milkweed. It's the orange kind, Asclepia tuberosa. There's another one over there with a carrot and some irises and a daisy and another uh, milkweed. And the uh, creeping jenny has a down uh, ground cover. Over here is more wheat with some broccoli and a, a, a dark purple budlia. I think maybe it's a, the black... They call it the black one. And uh, here's some uh, Leatris with some poppies planted underneath that have germinated but aren't really growing that much. There's a little pink petunia there. A Russian sage plant there to the left with a daylily touching it. There's a, in the middle there, that's a skull cap. And there's a pomegranate tree uh, over here in between the two broccolis. And... Uh, over here, the mountain laurel is doing great. It's loving its location in this full baking hot sun. This is a little daikon reddish here, and there's some native grasses and stuff planted here. This one is a dahlia, and these are bachelor buttons here. Uh, there's an, there, and those are zinnias, uh, leatrice as well. This is a dahlia, uh, more bachelor buttons. And I'm just trying to make this like a little, uh, just, I just want a, a, a bed of flowers here. This is a dahlia. And you can see the big blue stem. That's, that's what the, that grass is there. All right. And coming over here, you can see the uh, papaver reese and papaver somniferum there in the front. And this is the crimson clover that is blooming. Uh, this isn't like fully open. It's just barely begun opening, and the diacon radish is in is in bloom. These cute little starting out purplish pink, turning into white later blooms. That's a wheat there in the middle as well. Uh, more diacon radish and stuff. And this purple flower, well, blue. I don't know. Um, it's a spiderwort. This is a great native. It is edible, and some people say it has medicinal properties. I have two different colors. I have this, well, blue, but really it's purple, and the pink. The camera doesn't really show the the true color, but you can definitely tell that that is pink and purple. <laughs> and right here is some cilantro. It is in bloom. It's already bolted. 
and uh, you can see the little blooms here they're so cute i love it and especially back like with the with the dianthus in the background it's really awesome this is a um this is one of the bigger dianthus it kind of grows a little bit tall the pink one that i showed you earlier was like a dwarf the dwarf kind and look at this this is another iris bloom bud should be a white one whenever it opens and a little further down, here's another Maurice Trillo rose. That was a cutting from the other one. And um, I think I'll be removing this one because my sister wants one. And I only want one and I have two. This right here is a Gallarda or a blanket flower or a fire wheel. I really love these. They're a little bit sprawling, but the V's absolutely go crazy. This is a sunflower planted by the birds. And um, these Gallarda, they have a lot of variety. You can see all of these different um, uh, flower buds. And there's, I think there's two or three plants in here, and they're all from the same seed packet, but the blooms are all very different. You can see some of them have really a lot of yellow, and then other ones have like a lot of red, and I really like the ones that have more yellow. Right here is Papaver somniferum, and it's the giant um, um, rattle something. It's They're very large. And uh, behind it is an American Beauty Berry. Over here is a, uh, a plumbago. It's a blue plum plumbago. And here is some Texas vervain. Really cool native wildflower. Uh, and has Texas in the name. <laughs> and uh, that's a that's a big iris next to it. And here is a budlia. Um, under or planted, well, under self-sowed with a... Uh, there's a Black Eyed Susan, and this red flower, of course, is an Amaryllis. This is the one that was in the, my short, if you don't, I don't know if you saw that the other day. Here is a Rock Rose, and it's got really a lot of blooms on, I mean, a lot of buds on it, too. In the front there is a Plains Coreopsis. There's some broccoli there. Here's a, here's another Gallarda Blanket Flower that is more red, and mm, I don't really, I don't like that one as much. It doesn't look as good. I might remove that. I don't know. Um, more Plains Coreopsis there. And this is a Budlia. This one is uh, like like more light purple with the little orange uh, eye on the blooms. More Papaver Somniferum. These are the, the big ones. The giant ones. Um, and more wheat. There's some little blue stem. Daikon radish. Uh, carrots. That's a Vitex tree. No bloom, no buds on it yet. That's more like a later summer kind of thing. Over here, the Indian Hawthorn Clara variety is kind of um, on its way out. Doesn't have as many blooms on it, but it's still kind of interesting. The blooms are kind of turning brown and falling off, but it's uh, it's an it does really great in the hot sun. So uh, over here, are some daisies that are about to be blooming. We got a lot of buds on there, and more wheat in this little container. And this is a new addition here. It's a red leaf hibiscus. Here you go. You can see the tag there. And uh, this one uh, is very dark leaves. Uh, the bud on it is almost black. I thought, you know, like it, it looked like the bud, the bloom was going to be black. Here you can see a, a few of the buds. These are going to be flowers. And there is a, a spent bloom right here. It did bloom, and I will show you a photo of it uh, right now. Here is what the bud looks like. You can tell it looks really black. And then whenever it opens, it's this dark, deep red color. I love it. All right, on the other side, uh, this is the garden side, like the edible f area. I have some collards there, some lemon balm, um, diacon radish, um, thyme, oregano, there's basil, cilantro, there's all kind of things in these this little pyramid. It's very cool. And there you can see the diacon radish at the bottom and the oregano on the right. And over here, this uh, ox oxalis wood sorrel. Uh, this is a native, and uh, I think it's called pink, pink wood sorrel or pink oxalis. Uh, I don't know, really, but it is, it is definitely native. It was planted by a bird. Uh, over here, I picked up some rosemary last week, and I planted it there. And this is a guava tree, and I have some marigolds planted underneath of it. You can see the it is coming back. The guava fruit should be delicious this year. 
And behind it, this is a diacon radish, and you can see the little buds there for the bloom. And my uh, landscaper was so nice. He pruned my strawberries all the way down to the ground for me. See that? Isn't that wasn't that nice of him? <laughs> and that's okay. I put a I put a uh, little cage around it so he'll know next time to not do that. And uh, over here, the garden is really filling out. I removed a lot of that cabbage that wasn't going to head, and uh, that has caused my cucumbers to take off. You can see some blooms there, and I'm trying to show you here a little baby cucumber. I think you can probably see that. And uh, this red, you can see the red there. That's that's some lettuce. Uh, there's carrots, uh, broccoli. The This little bloom is a diacon radish. There is a pink Ozark tomato. I have spoon tomatoes and pink Ozark, Ozark pink, and they are both indeterminate. And I forgot where I planted each one, but they're the same size, so, you know. Uh, there's some bush beans and some snow peas, and I do have a snow pea right there. They're so good. They're delicious. They're, like, my favorite peas. Uh, red cabbage over there. I mean purple, not red. Over here, you can see another little tomato plant. It's not too early in Texas. Go ahead and plant them. Do it. Do it now. Here is uh, some Brussels sprouts, and you can see the little sprouts over there. You see that? And uh, like I said, it is Texas. We are already hot. Look at these poor little brassicas and these poor little diacon radishes. They are receiving too much sun. You can tell by the way that the leaves look, but these peppers have already germinated and uh they love it they love the sun they love it hot but these oh they're uh, i'm showing you a marigold there I, I have a few marigolds planted around you can see another one right there but yeah it's already too hot for some of of these cool weather uh, crops over here i have some chile pekin that's the bush in the corner and on this little mounded up area i have I'm trying, I'm trying to dodge my shadow here, but it's not working. There are three types of zinnias, and there are also, there are also some lavender planted and some chamomile. You can see the little seedlings here. This You can just really see the zinnias. And here is what I think is the lavender, I'm hoping. And over here, you can't see. Let me just... Let me just zoom in as far as I can here. There you go, chamomile. These seedlings are so small. So yeah, that's gonna be pretty. I forgot to show you this bud on the other side. This is a clematis and it is should be opening any day now and there's another bloom. All right, uh, here in the front yard, my uh, salvia is is budding out really close to blooming. This is the Victoria White. This is what the buds look like. And the big bed, you can see the uh, Vistamix Red Salvia is very much showing off. It's loving life with some ghost plant in there as well. I really love these red blooms. They're, I mean, they're just so eye-catching. You can't stop looking at it. It's almost fluorescent. So pretty. And the hummingbirds do like it. Um, in the big bed, we're, um, this is the anticipation stage of the amaryllises because you can see they're just about to open. You see some, some massive poppies uh, behind there. But look at all these buds. These are so close to opening. I can't wait. I can't wait. I have no less than 25 or 30 uh, blooms just waiting to happen. And each one uh, has at least one uh, flower inside of it and some of them have three or five so you can see i'm very excited and over here more shasta daisies getting ready to bloom and there's another type of daisy in there that i'm not sure is shasta but anyway i am showing you now of some pictures i've taken throughout the week and i hope you will take this time to go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you have not done so already please and thank you and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.